So one way to increase some interaction between you and your participants in Zoom is through annotate. So let's see how it works. First, you click on share screen. And I already have a page open, so I share this page. So you see a control panel on the top of this page. So you click on annotate. You click on it, and there are several tools that you can use to annotate this page. For instance, if I want to draw students' attention to, say, this area, I can use the draw function like a circle. So you can draw a circle here. You can also change the color of the highlight. So go to format, you change to red. And from now on, your highlights are red. A good thing about it is that your students can also use this annotate tool. So let's switch to student view. So this is what I see as a student. If I look at the top of the screen, I can see view options. I click on view options and here's annotate option for me. I click on it, I can do the same thing. I can draw, I can add a text box, etc. to this view. So let me add the text box. So I will add a text box, say, I like it here. I don't like this color, so I want to make it more obvious. I change it to black. Multiple users can do annotation at the same time. For instance, I can circle something here. And at the same time, my student does something else. I'm going to switch to the student screen. Did you see that my student typed hello? So it shows on my screen as well. As a teacher, you can ask students to give their opinions or share their thoughts or draw something on the screen. Another very useful screen you can share with your students is the whiteboard. So if you go to share screen, you see the option here, whiteboard. Click on share. This is a whiteboard that you can use to show your students anything. For instance, I can demonstrate how to write a certain character in Chinese using the draw function. Like I want to write me, it means you, Here you go. If you want your students to also contribute and write something on the board, they can using the annotation tool we just introduced. So now let's see how it works on students view. So this is the students view. Again, in students view, the option of annotate is located here, view options. You open it, annotate, and then you can do anything on this whiteboard as well. So let's do an arrow say point to this specific stroke. So the teacher would see that I put an arrow here pointing at something. In a language classroom, we often need to show students some video clips. For instance, I already have one video open from YouTube here. So I share the screen. And I can click on play and it will show on student screen. But there's one problem. The problem is that my computer is actually capturing my voice from the microphone, not from the computer. So in the student's end, they are not going to be able to hear the sound from this video clip. So I'm going to hit play and switch to student view so you can see how it works. So this is what students will see. They can see the movement on the screen, the content of the video clip, but they cannot hear anything. So one straightforward and kind of violent way to fix this problem is just to unplug my headphones and turn the volume way up so that my students can hear it feeding into my microphone. But that's not the best way to do it in Zoom. The best way to do it is keep your headphones on. But when you share your screen, do this instead. So click on share screen and you choose the page you want to open that has the video on it. Before you share it, you click on Optimize Screen Share for Video Clip. 
it will also automatically select share computer sound for you. So you click on share, and then you can enlarge the screen and play it in full screen view. Now your students can not only see but also hear the sound from your computer. It always requires a measure word, such as 你有几个兄弟姐妹。你家有几台电脑 ？And they can hear you at the same time. So if you want to pause the video and explain something, just go ahead, pause it like what I just did, and talk to them. Another very useful tool that Zoom offers is the breakout room. So you go to breakout rooms here, click on it. You can assign participants into however many rooms you like. You can have them automatically created, which means Zoom will assign the participants randomly into the Zooms with equal numbers, or you can manually put participants into different rooms. It is very useful in an online class because you can pair up students to do conversations. And you, as the host, can join any room at any time to check their progress. If you don't see the breakout rooms option available in your Zoom app, you will have to enable it from settings. So you go to settings under In Meeting Advanced. You enable breakout room here. A sub option here is to allow the host to assign participants to breakout rooms when scheduling. In other words, when participants enter the meeting rooms, they are already in the breakout rooms that you assign them to. So to pre-assign participants into breakout rooms when they enter the meeting, you will have to schedule meetings from this page. So you go to meetings, and you schedule a new meeting. And you scroll down, you should be able to see meeting options, and breakout room pre-assign would be one of them. And then you can create rooms here, and you add participants by their email. Waiting room in Zoom is especially useful when you are holding office hours or when you are giving one-on-one -on -one oral exams, because then you can have an uninterrupted conversation with one student when others are kept waiting in that waiting room. In order to set it up, you want to go to Settings on Zoom.us. So you go to Settings. You want to go to In Meeting Advanced. You scroll down all the way until you see waiting room. So you want to toggle it over. Now your meeting attendees can only join the meeting when you allow them to. Now, as you can see, when a new participant enters the room, they will put in the waiting room here until I admit them into this room.